Gramagut, Les Concorla. And first of all, I want to say that I'm sp speaking in support of the amendment. Um, but the one thing I'd say about the amendment, it is a damn bad day if we have to bring in an amendment like that uh, to support it. And I, I understand where they're coming from. I said I support it. But um, what it is is basically that we never do it again, or that it wouldn't go any further. And I understand where they're coming from, Richard, and all of those. But um, to be quite honest about it, I cannot see what we're doing at all um, in relation to this bill, Minister. Um, because they're talking about uh, this after the three-month period that wouldn't ever be uh, contemplated again. But with the way this stall has gone, I don't think you can rule out anything. Um, like we talked about solidarity for the last 18 months. We talked about standing together. Today, I see youngsters down there um, gathered in, down there at the, the bridge, and they're being left behind. And Minister, I think we need to clarify a few things as well. Um, and I'd like if you did. Um, today or this evening, Mr. Hulan came out and he talked about youngsters uh, not being able to go into a pub. Um, are we afraid of a vaccine or is there something that we have to be told? Because if people are vaccinated, that's within the pub. And the youngsters, it, time and time again, right throughout this year, we were told they were able to go to school, that there was no problem, they were able to go to school. And now we're saying that they shouldn't go into the pub. And I think we need clarification on that, Minister, or what agenda is going on that you bring one thing out, and, and, and I don't doubt you say in what, you know, you're probably, I don't know, maybe doing your best if you think you are, but, um, and then someone else chops you that evening in the media. And I think we need some sort of clarification on that because I just can't understand, Minister, on the antigen testing, how you won't do it, or the PCR testing. I can go across the border tomorrow, I can have, go into a restaurant wherever I was, I can fly to England, but I cannot um, go in, no one can go in with their family, or uh, say over 18 years of age. Um, and Minister, I think that you need to, basically, is, I, the one other question I want to know, because there's no point in us standing up here all night, every single one of us, and I'm, and I'm going to be pretty short. Um, there's no point to us standing up, going through amendment after amendment. I think the first thing you might do, to be honest with the politicians in opposition, is are you going to accept any amendment? I think that needs to be clarified, because there's no point in us going round in circles all night and we're not knowing. Um, and I think, Minister, that you need to come clear on that during the year, you, Minister Houlihan, everyone told everyone, them kids, perfect, go on to school, mighty. And it worked. And I, don't, and I don't dispute that whatsoever. And this evening then the school was thrown in before even this debate started that the kids shouldn't, the parents shouldn't bring them to the pub, even though the parents are vaccinated. And the other sickening side of this is the young people that could be working within in, in the bar or the restaurant all week or during the week or they might have a night off and damn me would have to go outside and look in. Um, like there's something, there's something gone wrong with this country the way we're going, and I think we're, we're, I, I honestly think that if we keep doing what we're doing, and if we keep basically tantalising and basically bringing in legislation that's dividing our country, we will see civil disobedience from youngsters down the road. I'd be afraid of that because they have helped and they have all the last 18 months. I think we should salute them what they have done. Because they're young, they're youthful. And yeah, there was an odd time that things went a bit AWOL here and there. But the media were great to show that, to nearly, you know, try and show them up. But have a look at the amount of youngsters that's in this country and what they've done and the sacrifices they made. And they made it for their grandmothers, their fathers, their mothers, or their grandfathers, or their aunts or their uncles. They made that sacrifice. And today, we are just casting them aside. And while I support the amendment, I would ask you to look at bringing in a simple thing called an antigen test or a PCR. And I think if you went round this doll, and if people weren't pood brought out like poodles that they had to tow the party line, I think if you asked every one of them individually in a private vote, how would the vote that say, Jesus, that's a bit of common sense, that we'll do that? But there doesn't seem to be any much of this around here. I don't know what has come over and it's not, I sat beside you a many a time when you were an independent before you went to the Sockdins. And gee, I just can't fathom 
how we can be ramming stuff through here. There's no such thing as, as basically working together as, as the way dolls should work. I remember the last doll. In fairness, it worked better. There was more cooperation than there is in this. This is basically, you'll hear it on the radio at the weekend, there's something coming. That's the first we hear it. The media is able to tell us what's coming. We don't even know. And we're, we're elected to represent constituents. And the media will be able to send it out there. And we're not having just, a bull's eye of what's deputy, coming. It's and I number, think that that deputy, has to change. Deputy, it's amendment number one. Yeah, I know that. I, I'm talking about the amendment. Yeah, I've told no. them I'm supporting their amendment. Yeah. But I'm saying that the amendment, while it's done in good faith, I don't think that we should be going down this road because the doll isn't the way that democracy should function. We are heading, in my opinion, towards dictatorship in this country.